Hi, I'm Michael. One of our Christmas traditions is to make candy and chocolates to give out to friends and family. In the past several years, I've used these Wilton candy molds to make the chocolates, but for a few years now, I've been wanting to personalize the chocolates with our family name or some other design. And now that I have a 3D printer, I want to see if we can use it to accomplish that. My friend Simon from the channel RC Life On actually 3D printed using chocolate. He modified an FDM printer with a special pump to print chocolate instead of filament. But of course with a resin printer we can't print directly with chocolate. There's no way to do that. So what about printing a chocolate mold? Well we also can't print the mold directly. For one it would come out too stiff and to easily remove the chocolates the mold needs to be flexible like rubber. But the main reason is that the resin we use in 3D printing is not food safe. Not even close. There's no way to cure or clean the 3D printed part well enough so that you can use it in food preparation. Instead, the mold needs to be made with a food safe silicon. So my current idea is to print a mold to make a mold. I'll 3D print a positive, what I want the chocolates to look like, and then cast off that to make the final silicon mold that we'll use to make the chocolates. Oh, and there's still one problem. I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never done any mold making or casting before, and I've never worked with these materials. So I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. But hopefully by the end of this, we'll have some nice custom chocolates to enjoy. Like I said, I've never done any molding or casting before. So I did what you would do. I turned to YouTube to learn how to do all of this. And I stumbled on Robert Talone's channel. And I'm actually gonna be giving him a call in just a minute because the only thing better than watching an expert YouTuber is talking to them directly. But one of the things I learned from his videos was to test, 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 test. In this video, I'm gonna be using SmoothOn's SmoothSil 940, which is a platinum based food safe silicon. SmoothOn provided me with the silicon I'm using in this video. So I wanna thank them for sponsoring this experiment. Here's the first issue. Food safe silicon is platinum based. There are also 10 based silicons. And I don't understand all the science behind it at this point, but it seems that there's possibly something in the resin we use in 3D printers that can inhibit the platinum-based silicons from curing correctly. So I followed Robert's advice yesterday and I did a test. Okay, SmoothOn suggested that I might need to coat the part with a sealer before casting it. The assumption was that the 3D print resin would inhibit the platinum silicon from curing and that I might need to coat the piece with something that could act as a barrier and allow it to cure. I had three different resin mixtures that I wanted to test, and I picked up three different cans of paint to use as a barrier coat. Including the set with no coating, that was 12 total combinations. So I mixed up a small batch of the silicone and applied it to each of those. Those have been sitting overnight, but it's time to call Robert and get his advice. So, hi Robert, you've got a great YouTube channel on mold making and casting, and I've been watching your videos a lot and I've learned a lot already. But uh, I thought before diving into this project that it would be good to talk directly to the expert. Well, so, when the expert gets here, you know, we'll ask him. But uh, so yeah, right. great, whatever. Yeah, shoot a fire away. So I already talked to you a little bit uh, previously about the project and what I'm trying to do. And I'm gonna be using the SmoothSil 940, which is a SmoothOn product. Right. Uh, because that's food safe. Right. And um, I, what do you think the biggest challenges I'm going to face with this project. Well, um, I don't know for sure what you know what the problems you're going to run into. I have not used that particular material. Uh, it's a platinum rubber, and if you've already tested for the compatibility issues, and there are none that you know that your, your rubber is going to cure against your models and all that good stuff. Um, you well, actually, I I just did that test last night, but I haven't peeled it off yet. So we're going to find out, you know, if any of those. Um, cure okay, I guess. Right. Well, you you could probably tell, you know, now just if, if any of them are still liquid after since last night, then you know you have cure inhibition, but you won't know that if you're going to have surface cure inhibition because sometimes the body of the thing will cure, and then when you peel it off, it's just sticky or tacky at the surface. Well, and I have I have a piece here that I pulled off. This is an extra piece that I did. This was not clear coated at all. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's solid on the top. I mean, it, now I did those at eight o'clock last night and it's two o'clock, so that's not quite 24 hours, but. Right. But still um, it should I be would, enough to, to be, know if it's set up or not, right? Yeah, I mean, it looks set up to me. I mean, I can peel this one off, it's fine. 
Let me just peel this off here. Yeah, that's dry inside. Okay, perfect. I mean, yeah, then there's, there's no problem there. That's dry. Good. Okay, good. Well, so um, if that hadn't worked, or if even after like spraying it or whatever, if the silicon won't cure because of that. Yeah, it's just platinum rubber can be super hypersensitive to any kind of weird plastics and metals and all that other stuff. Yeah, and, and, and they're, it's expensive, so you yes. don't want to waste like $45 worth of material and then find out that it's all gummy inside. So, right, yeah. right. So, um, but one of the things I, s I learned on your channel too was that it doesn't all have to be mixed up and poured at the same time. Like you could pour some down in the bottom and yep. then mix up more and pour the next, right? Yep. I would have never thought that you could do that. I don't know why. But, and you can yeah. even let it cure. I mean, I often we'll do multi-day pours. So yeah, you can absolutely, that's why you can't pour the rubber against itself without uh without a, agent. A, a without a without a barrier coat in there without some kind of a release because it will they will bond to itself the rubber will any videos you got coming up that we would want to well my you know my videos are really kind of blog style almost i didn't ever thought they would be but they just follow more or less what's going on in the shop and uh, my viewers send in the projects which is a lot of fun and uh so there's a lot of stuff in progress right now. I'm doing a production of 100 castings on one job. Um, this next week, I'm going to be just doing a video just on my pressure pot and my vacuum chamber and why and when to use them. So I uh, bought a vacuum chamber, so I will be able to degas right. this stuff before I pour it. That's what it all comes down to is getting the air out of the way, basically. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, um, I will let you know how it all goes. Perfect. Sounds great. Good luck with all that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. See you later. I was really surprised that the test I pulled during the call was completely cured. It wasn't tacky at all. And sure enough, when I checked each of the 12 tests, they had all cured just fine. So it seems at least with this particular smooth on product, the silicon cures just fine when used with Sierra Blue or my frozen TR250 resin. And that's a load off because it's one less thing to worry about. So next I needed to design the chocolates. It took me a couple of days to complete, but you can watch it in this short montage. I did run into this issue, Fusion 360 sort of hit its limit with complex designs like this. Anytime I was working on this detailed Christmas tree, I found that I had to be very patient. If you know of a better design solution, please let me know in the comments. Hey, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I have some cool project videos coming out and you won't want to miss out on anything. Okay, this thing is almost three times larger than my build plate. I'm going to print flat on the plate, so I divided the big block into three sections. I'm also running these through Bulge Buster to remove the elephant's foot. If you want to know more about that, check out my video on that free app. Okay, let's print it. Well, I ran into my first issue. There was nothing on the build plate. All right, I'll just spare you the hours of troubleshooting before my daughter finally asked me, Have you tried forcing an unexpected reboot? Let's print it again. It's not perfect. There are some problems here with the hole in one of the chocolates. I think it's better if I cut these up into individual pieces. That will put some space between them, but also that way if one fails, I can maybe still salvage the other pieces. Let's try printing it again. Let's print it again. Okay, I'm an idiot. I forgot to tighten down the thumb screws on the build plate. So the build plate was basically floating around as it was printing. I'm lucky it didn't fall off here and ruin my LCD panel. I also made a slight modification to the artwork. Let's try printing it again. 
I printed the wrong version of the file. The changes I made didn't get incorporated. I'll fix that and we'll print it again. Okay, you won't believe this. I forgot to tighten the thumb screws again. Let's try one more time. Okay, finally, this one looks good. Okay, now I just need to print the rest of the pieces and then assemble the mold. The mold came out really good. It just needs a quick wash and then we can make some chocolates. To make these chocolates hollow so you can fill them with something, the way I do it is I first wipe over the artwork with a small spatula. I want to get the chocolate down in that artwork. Then I pour a little in and I wipe it up each of the sides. After I've got them all coated in there, this goes in the fridge to chill for about 15 minutes, just long enough to harden the edges of the chocolate a little. Next, I fill up the cavities with whatever I want. I'm doing different filling for each design. We have cookies and cream, marshmallow fluff, almonds, cherries, crispy rice, chocolate cinnamon ganache. Then top them off and shake it out a little bit to even the chocolate. Then chill them again for maybe 30 minutes. And then pull them out of the mold and package them up. We also made some s'mores bark and some haystacks to fill out the rest of the box. I started off this video wanting to 3D print chocolates. And while with a resin printer I couldn't do it directly, I did the next best thing. And whether you want that 3D print effect as a look or not, I did. The silicon captures the 3D print detail perfectly. Here's some of the chocolates under macro. You can see the print lines and the voxels replicated here just as they were on the original 3D printed masters. And I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to be sending a box of chocolates to Robert as a thanks for helping me out on this video. We can check out his channel to see whether he likes them or not. And I'm going to be working with him on another video coming up soon. You know, I expected the mold making to be the more difficult part of this project, but really it was no problem. The Smooth On Food Safe Silicone actually worked really well. And I'm not just saying that because they provided the silicone for this project. It was thick and a little difficult to work with, but honestly, not that bad, and the result is pretty flawless. And of course, the chocolates are fun to eat. See you next time.